there, it's Anonymous Tea, where we spill the tea anonymously. Hello, 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 everyone. Hello, YouTubers. Hope you guys are all having an amazing day today, sending good vibes, sending positivity, sending blessings, and good energy to each and every single one of you. Thank you so much for tuning in. So today we're talking Love and Marriage Huntsville. You guys know why you were here. Today we are talking, you guys, I literally just got home. I, I thought I was going to have a chill night and, and all these things. And, and, and I, I, I am, uh, you know, met with chaos from none other than Carlos King, you guys, alleging some linear ratings, which we're going to talk to what that means in a moment, that he is trying to allege this last episode, episode six, where Nielsen ratings, where the cable TV ratings, where all the reputable uh, publications reported that this was the lowest episode of the season, you guys. Carlos King is now alleging that this was the most watched episode in the history of Love and Marriage Huntsville, you guys. In the history of the franchise, you guys. Can you make it make sense? Can, can you tell me who the heck was watching this episode? And, and, and I'm going to need the people in the comments to not make this a melometer issue or, or a Mel uh, supporters, uh, Mel fans issue. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. People who are blacking out are, are not just melometers or Mel supporters, you guys. There are people who are actual fans of the show who want nothing to do with the show, and it has nothing to do with being a melometer or a Mel supporter, you guys. They're just flat out over the tomfoolery. They're over the BS. They are over the fake storylines. They are over the contrived uh, nonsense that the show is offering. So, so I just need to understand correctly, since you want to play this game of semantics, Carlos King, since you want to play this game of uh, we're going to wait six weeks to report these record-breaking ratings when it doesn't take that long to report any live plus three-day, you know, streaming on demand footage of the, you know, audience watching a television show. It doesn't take six weeks, Carlos King, to report that information. The thing is, you were getting dragged and conveniently uh there's negotiations that are up on whether or not there's going to be more episodes for love and marriage huntsville also conveniently coming up uh there is an upcoming court date regarding the lawsuit against one of your quote-unquote core six cast members and the oprah winfrey network so conveniently this article comes out that i had to dig for because if you flat out search on variety for love and marriage huntsville nothing comes up except for an article from 2022 you guys this portion that carlos king is referencing is buried at the bottom of an inner of an article today that we're going to get to in a moment, you guys. Uh, because first, Carlos King says the following on his Instagram. Because I thought this was April Fool's, you guys. I, I truly thought this was April Fool's. Carlos King, you know, he posts this on his social media. He also tags Kingdom Reign Entertainment. Has a screenshot of the Love and Marriage Huntsville cast this season. And it says, Love and Marriage Huntsville hits rating series high. You guys, there, there is no article that's entitled this. I just want to say that for the record. And it says the following. It says, God is good. We took a hefty risk this season with fresh storylines. There, there's no new storylines, Carlos. Really? Everyone's a side chick. What, what is fresh about that? I, uh, you know... Fresh storylines, faces, and baby, it's paying off. Thank you to the new viewers, loyal and new, uh, to the talented cast and crew and network execs who put the work to make a great show. Teamwork, men lie, women lie, numbers don't. Catch Love and Marriage Huntsville every Saturday at 8 on on. Uh, and here's the thing. I... Uh, Clever marketing is what somebody said in the comments, but we all heard the ratings were super low and the storylines are boring. Uh, a couple of other people who, who see what is happening, right? Who, who see the nonsense, right? Uh, and uh, some people even think that, you know, perhaps there, there might have been some alleged uh, money exchanged, right? But I found the article, you guys. I found the article... And I found the receipts, you guys. And so we are going to read this because, again, since Carlos King wants to play this game of semantics, I'm going to play a game of semantics too, right? So here's what this says at the bottom of an article, you guys, buried at the very end. 
It says, owns Love and Marriage Huntsville, which follows a group of longtime friends and frenemies. Uh, uh, first of all, these people are not friends. They're not, they're not frenemies. They all hate each other. Let's make that clear. With strong personalities. Oh, great way to describe a black show. Great way to describe black people. Strong personalities. Aggressive personalities. Like, come on now. Anna Pinions, who live in Huntsville, Alabama, ranks as Saturday night's number one telecast among all key African-American demos across both broadcast and cable, according to The Cabler. <laughs> the first six episodes of season eight have averaged a 3.16 L3 rating among African-American women, 25 to 54. Pay attention to that again. The 3.16 L3 rating. It's We're going to talk about it, right? We're going to talk about what this L3 nonsense is. And it says, on Saturday, June 8th, the series averaged a 3.36 L3 rating in that demo. A 211% ratings increase in the demo uh, versus the live plus SD rating 1.08, making it the show's highest live plus SD to L3 ratings increase in ever. Who wrote this article? Oh my gosh. According to OWN, more than 3.7 million total viewers have watched Love and Marriage Huntsville across linear. So, so again, Notice the semantics here, you guys. They're not saying flat out the episode had 3 million viewers, right? They're not posting flat out what the real demo is for each of these episodes. And they're waiting until six weeks later, until six weeks of the show being dragged. And I, uh, you know, the latest rating saying the lowest episode ever. This article conveniently comes out, conveniently comes out before the next court date of the lawsuit, the countersuit against own and one of your cast members. No, 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 no. We're not going to play this game, you guys. So, so what is this linear that keeps being referenced in the article? Because if it flat out was 3 million viewers, it would just say that. And the fact that uh, Carlos King uh, grayed out the bottom portion of the article, which is the actual receipt, right? That is the actual receipt, right? Uh, of what this is, right? He, he, you know, tried to, you know, cut out some of this article to just focus in on, on the 3 million viewers and try to make it seem like nearly 4 million people are tuning into this tomfoolery this season when we all know that is a flat out lie, you guys. We all know that's a flat out lie. We all know that several people are boycotting this season and are boycotting the tomfoolery. And once again, you're telling me your golden boy Martel, the episode he's not in, was the most watched ever. Right? That's what you're saying, Carlos. So that would mean we don't need Martel on the show. Right? If you want to play this game of semantics, we can play this game of semantics, Carlos. I, I We can go tit for tat, right? On back and forth. So which is it, right? Which is it? The show doesn't need Mel? Or, or, or the show needs Martel, but more people tune in without him? Or nobody tunes in without him. Like, I need you to make it make sense to me, right? So, basically what linear ratings is, which is technically an outdated uh, form of reporting because of the popularity of streaming and digital uh, television watching in 2024. Uh, but nonetheless, we'll, we'll, we'll play this game, right? Linear TV is delivered through a cable service or satellite, right? And uh, CTV, that is delivered digitally through the internet, you guys. And so essentially the number of linear TV viewers is falling because um, CTV and streaming services are where the consumers, where the companies are trying to get the consumers, right? And so essentially what happens with linear TV is that 
It uses software to select programs and advertising packages to households. So it's basically indexing certain time slots against advanced audience parameters to try to, you know, give certain numbers, right? And so this is all by a home by home basis. This is based off of advertising. Uh, this is based off of satellite bo um, boxes. This is based off of video on demand. Uh, this is based off of ad insertion technology. Uh, so, so this is several factors involved, you guys. So that's why this article is a little bit misleading because if truly 3 million people watch this episode, the article would just say that. But it keeps referencing linear ratings for a reason, meaning at some point at the height of the episode, right? At any point throughout this episode, that there was some type of, you know, either people tuned in or people were tweeting about about it or people were you know streaming or replaying a particular scene or whatever there Carlos King is trying to utilize that to say hey th this means that over 3 million people watched but I want you guys to keep your eyes on the prize and I don't want you guys to fall for the trap that many people are going to fall for and are going to think that this misleading article means that over 3 million people are tuning in per episode this season and it's a flat out lie because the last season it's the last sentence of this article itself says that over the course of this season there's been a total overall of 3 million viewers which would indicate at any point in time, whether it was a new episode or a replay of an episode, uh, or even if they're counting YouTube views off of their YouTube channel, right? They're trying to tabulate all of that by basically saying over the last six weeks, hey, uh, it, it's been up to it's been upwards of three million people at one point in time that that is tuned in, right? But that's not reality, you guys, because if it was really 3 million viewers an episode, it would say that on, you know, the Nielsen ratings. It would say that on all of the reputable uh, cable TV ratings that report those numbers, you guys. But again, I think this is semantics. I think, again, this was a negotiating tactic to utilize for the network. Um, to try to get additional episodes for this show to be renewed. And I think also this is also a negotiation tactic um, to be utilized for this lawsuit, right? To try to, again, sway whatever the direction this lawsuit against Owen and the cast member is going to go to try to say that the show is still lucrative for the Owen network, boys. And I want you to stay woke. I want you to keep your eyes on the prize and see the tomfoolery. Why is it that for Bell Collective and, um, you know, uh, Love and Marriage DC, Love and Marriage Detroit, all these other shows, Carlos King, you have not ever reported on any quote unquote linear L3 ratings or total ratings average across six episodes, you guys. Make it make sense. Please make it make sense, right? Because even if you just add up the total viewers of, of, of just the base viewers alone of the first six episodes, it's like, um, I think over 1 million viewers, right? If we're just adding up each episode, right? So you would have to factor in other things such as social media, such as YouTube, such as, you know, all these other things, all these other avenues of watching the show. And that's why this is misleading, right? But but God is good, right? So see, again, using the Lord's name in vain, right? But where is God when you are being dragged all week? Why didn't you come out earlier? If, the, if, the, if this was really averaging 3 million viewers each week, it doesn't take six weeks, you guys, to get the live plus three day uh, on demand DVR ratings, you guys. That's what I mean, right? I feel the timing of it is very suspicious because this would have been something you would have boasted about six weeks ago if this were truly the case. But what you're doing is you're trying to tabulate 
over the last six weeks, you're looking at social media engagement. You're looking at all of the views uh, that people are getting talking Love and Marriage Huntsville. You're getting trying, you know, all of the views that people are getting on YouTube, people that are watching clips off of Instagram and other social media platforms. You're trying to tabulate all of that and say, hey, we're getting all this engagement. We're trending on Saturday nights with 2,000 tweets and we are dominating. No, 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 right? Like, like, let's not do this. Really, three million of us tuned in Saturday night? Oh, okay. When most of us were at the movies seeing bad boys? Is that what we're doing? The lies you tell, right? But again, some people are going to eat this up because people who are anti-Mel or, you know, anti-certain people on the show, they're going to think that this is all a big conspiracy, right? And they're going to be like, oh, since this is, you know, being from Variety, this, this has got to be legitimate. But they're ignoring this L3 linear ratings nonsense that nobody else is referencing when reporting their ratings. Even the Vanderpump Rules ratings did not reference no linear or L3 ratings, you boys. They flat out said, hey, nearly four and a half million people are tuning into our episode. There was no other semantics. There was no other figures trying to say, hey, at one point in time, at, at, at this point in the episode, up to, you know, three million people saw this, right? They saw this on Twitter. They saw this on Instagram. They saw this at, you know, 830, right? In the episode, they all were talking about it. No, 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 no. We're not going to do that, you guys. I, I can't allow it. I can't allow fake news to be spread to you guys. And for you guys to follow like sheep. And and again, conveniently, this comes out the night before a new episode. So naturally, you're going to think, those of you who think that, that, that all, all these people are lying about the ratings, about the low ratings, this is a tactic to get you to tune in, to manipulate it, to get you to watch the show tomorrow. Or, or really tonight, depending on where you guys are, right? Because by putting out this article, making you think, oh, there's a lot more people tuning in than what you think, it's a manipulation tactic to try to get more viewership for this next episode. To say, hey, episode seven, all these people tuned in, four or 500,000 people tuned into this episode, you guys. And then all of a sudden, all this linear crap is, is going to be out the window. So I need you guys to stay woke. I need you guys to be on task that and don't get distracted. Don't fall for this. Don't think that the ratings are higher than what Carlos King is all of a sudden claiming right before the next episode, right after it's been reported all week that this was the last episode was the lowest, uh, you know, rated and everything else. And like I said, an upcoming court date hap is happening, right? Please do not get sucked into the fray and to the tomfoolery of this all, right? Uh, so we'll talk about this more um, as well. But I just wanted to give you guys a heads up that some people are going to be thinking that this is a celebration and that their ratings had lied, even though these were the same people that reported the same ratings as all the rest of us did from the same reputable website. So who is lying? right are, are we lying or is the is the is the sites that have been reporting the same ratings the last six weeks are they lying or is somebody who out of the blue the night before a new episode where you know people need to tune in you come out with this tomfoolery of an article focusing on linear ratings you guys so there's that let me know your thoughts in the comments Please do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you're notified the moment I post new content on my channel. And with that being said, I'll talk to you guys again very soon.